Hi everyone, today I'm working on a thermostatic valve for my hot water heater. Um, it's been giving me trouble, it hasn't been uh, allowing the hot water to come through and I, I was trying to adjust it and nothing happened so I took it out to see what's going on. So this is a Watts unit. The problem that I'm having is that on this side, the hot side is actually quite hot. Uh, on this side is cold, but near the valve is a bit warm there. It shouldn't be warm. And of course, on this side, the water going out to the house, it's lukewarm. Before you do anything, make sure you shut off the water going into the hot water heater. And make sure you actually drain your hot water by turning off, turning on, I should say, a sink nearby on the hot water until it stops running. Remember that there will be water in these tubes still, regardless, because that's one of the lowest points there. So once you start turning this, you'll start having drips. Put a bucket underneath or something because it will drain for a while and be, uh, be ready uh, to have some splashes there. Maybe a rag will help too. I've done that, so right now, if even if I turn this, there will be no drips or very minimal drips. As you probably noticed, I already loosened these bolts. I actually used this wrench, which is not the ideal one by any means, uh, but that's the only one I had that actually fit there. So you want to go in this direction. Sorry about this, let me just get it straight. So you can see, yeah, in that direction. Um, and then this one goes on this direction. And finally, this one, I'll go on the other side. Give me a second. Uh, this way. So um, that's the direction you want to go to remove the uh, valve. So this is a Watts unit. Um, and I was able to open it, but I wanted to show you how this thing actually comes off. So the cap, there's a little screw on top here that I've removed already. This is the cold water side. This is the hot water side. And there you go. So what you want to do is use... Um, what I used was actually this. In order to open the valve, make sure you put vice grips in this area here, and then you can twist by hand. So now that I have this, I can just start twisting it. And there we go. So this comes off. And this is what you'll find. So that looks like this. And again, let's see then this. So what you'll find inside here is this. Let me get this straight. Here's a close look at the inside. There's not very much in there. When I first took this out, it was quite stuck. So now it's loose because I already took it out and I greased it a bit so able to i'm pushing it from the bottom here because there's a little thing you can push in a little rod so feeling that you can grab a little screwdriver and then gently try to press it out and it will come out. See, it's loose. It's supposed it's to be loose, loose and moving When freely. I first got this, it wasn't loose. It wasn't moving at all. So of course it was not functioning properly. And then pushing it from the bottom. There we go. Took longer than I thought. So this is what you have. You have this little piece here, which goes on the bottom like this. And that's all, there's nothing else, nothing else in there. So what I did, oh yeah, there's also these little pieces on the side, which are little valves. And one on this side too. So all I did was I placed this here inside this little bucket and all I have here is a bit of water and vinegar to take out the, the calcium buildup and stuff. So I dropped all this in here, all these different pieces. 
this part here had a lot of buildup, I guess, around it. So I just cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, so it's all ready. It's been overnight. So to reinstall it, it's quite simple. Make sure the top part where you adjust the temperature is freely moving side to side. That's what adjusts the temperature. So uh, make sure you do that. And what I did was I put a little bit of cooking grease uh, just, just to, uh, to keep it a bit um, uh, freer. I'm not sure how long it will last because of course hot water will take it away. Um, and that's the problem with these things. To put it back in, you can put the spring first, spring facing the bottom. Kind of looks like this. You see it? Then this other piece goes in here, straight down. Again, I put crease, a grease, it's loose. And these two, this side goes in like this. And then the other side, same thing. And then it's just a matter of putting the, screwing the top back in there. You can do it like this. Sure, it's tight. There you go. So it's ready to be reinstalled. These are a couple of filters that you should check too. Make sure they're clean before you put them in. I might need to replace them. I'll see if they leak. <laughs> Make sure they're they're nice and clean. And there you go. So I'm ready to reinstall it. To reinstall, make sure you align the threads. You don't want to cross thread it, make it straight. And there you go. Do it by hand first. Make sure it's all nice and tight by hand. Okay, and then same thing, using my Allen wrench, I think it's called. <laughs> you don't want to strip it, but nice and tight. Make sure it's tight or else it will be leaking. You have to double check for leaking afterwards too, of course. This is not much fun doing it with one hand. Okay, that should do it. All I have to do now is make sure once it's nice and tight, turn on the water back on to the, to the water heater and then make sure that it's not leaking anywhere and then check to make sure it's working fine. And that way, save myself a hundred and something bucks just for this. Let's see how that works. As soon as I install everything, everything is tight, there's no leaks, the water's already on, coming through. You can hear the system on, of course. This is hot. This is hot still, coming this way. And this is cold. Cold, cold, cold coming to the system. So all I have to do is make sure everything is running well. This is not dripping anywhere. It's not dripping from here. It's not dripping from here or here or here. So it all looks good, so I think we're, we're going to work well.